Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where today I'm a little bit anxious for what we're about to discover, but this is the purpose, the reason that I have brought my AMG GT Black Series back out here to Germany. We're in the Eiffel Mountains, we're at the Nürburgring, we've been doing some laps, but today we're here at Opus, where about a year and a half ago, this car got all of its upgrades to around 850 horsepower, as we saw on the dyno behind me, but it now has over 20 thousand miles. Now in an ordinary car 20,000 miles is no big deal but not many customer AMG GT Black Series have driven that much. It's had a pretty hard life. We have been on not one two but three continents. We've driven in hot temperatures in cold temperatures. We've had probably eight to ten different track days so we need to talk brakes and we're also going to need to talk tyres in just a second as well but the key thing is to pop it up onto the lifts to give it a service and to have an inspection of what this is looking like. That's why I'm anxious because we've talked about some of the things on the surface, but it's what's under the skin that we're gonna be finding out about today. Now, not only that, of course we drove over, we did some laps of the Nürburgring GP in the most horrible of horrible weather, but we were going to do some fun laps of the Nordschleife until last night, this corner got a puncture just as we were about to go out literally i saw it ping up we then took it over to apex george over there twisted symmetry legend plugged it so that at least we can drive get the car home and sort all of that but it did rather scupper my plans to go out and have a lot of fun on the nordschleife anyway there's something i need to do before we get the car inside let me show you what that is and then we're going to be seeing what's up with the gt black series <laughs> I've got two sets of wheels for this car. These ones have the Cup 2s on. These are actually the Cup 2s from the regular AMG GTR, but obviously that's the full set. The other set at home have the Cup 2 Rs. So I'm not sure which way around I want to do this exactly. You get more longevity from the regular Cup 2s. So that's one for me to think about. For now, I'm probably gonna have to get a new set. The rears have been on since I was in Utah with Strat. Those have done now probably, I want to say, 10,000 miles on the rears. Not too bad, but end of life. The fronts I had to change again when I was in Arizona because I got a front puncture when I was at the podium club doing some laps out there. I seem to have bad luck when I go near racetracks with this car. So they're only about 6,000 miles in. But anyway, at the end of the day, to get 10,000 miles from a set of Cup 2s is not bad going. The key thing, though, that many of you will know about this car is that it has lots of memories from the different places that it's been to very quickly remind about some of these track day at yas marina the parking at the abu dhabi f1 that was actually the entry ticket to the dubai autodrome that day been to film with chris fix whistling diesel hamilton collection patina collective track day at donnington went to the peterson track day at circuit of the americas shipped out we've got cars who stored it for a while track day at willow springs filmed with all of the car trek guys hoovy tavarish vin wiki but of course it never got one of these, and I've been to the Nürburgring fan shop, I've got my hoodie, I've got my jacket, I've got my sticker. You would normally put these on the outside, but I tend to just splatter the boot here. Um, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now because it's almost criminal that I haven't, given it drove the Nordschleife before its upgrades. Like I said, I have just done a few slower laps because puncture, obviously couldn't exactly floor it, but I want to pop this onto the car. Let me figure out how to carefully get this off without making a complete mess. Kind of only got one hit doing this, otherwise I'll be back to the fan shop to buy another one. <laughs> right, there we go. Um, that's gonna go in here. Very cheesy, but very important part of the car's life, given it spent a fair bit of time out here. There we go. I hope I've got this right. Make sure it's stuck down properly just come, becoming quite fun. I think cars like this don't normally have these kind of things, but given it's been, oh, that hasn't quite peeled properly, given it's been so far and wide, it is a big part of the um, story. Oh dear, oh dear. Carefully does it, let's get that back down. And just like that, we're good. Finally, Nürburgring sticker on the AMG GT Black Series, because it has driven the Nordschleife, it has driven the GP, and it won't be the last time either. And it was a lot of fun, even if it was taking it easy. Drove with my friend in his GT Black Series as well. We had a pair of them out on the, uh, the Nordschleife side by side. But it's a practical car. It's a usable car. That's why I do so many miles with it. I enjoy it an awful lot. It's very, very comfortable. And in fact, if you take a quick look in here, we are on now 32,000 
515 kilometers, which I can tell you, because I looked it up earlier, is 20,204 miles. It was about 1,800 miles when we did the upgrades. So it's done 18 and a half thousand miles since then. That's a lot for this kind of thing. We dynoed it to 847 horsepower. Standard claimed is 730. Of course, you get a bit more because twin turbo engine, that's always accounting for bad conditions, bad fuel, etc. But 850 horsepower, it's a whole lot. I've driven this thing in many great places. To have driven the same car, and this is what I can't get my head around, at the Nürburgring in Germany, at Yas Marina in the UAE, and at Circuit of the Americas in the USA, mind blown and that's just the start there's a lot more to come so i guess in a second we'll pull it inside get it up on the ramps have a bit of an inspection and see where the car is at time to get this started loud start it's got to be that just sounds mega when you consider that the standard black series is fairly muted that sound is obviously a marked improvement this is a very familiar ramp as well it is exactly where the parts for this were installed we have the valve control as well from Opus, remember? Talk more about the upgrades that we've got on the car when it's fully up and lifted. Shame it's not cleaner, but hey, only so much we can do with the conditions. There's also another solar beam, AMG GT, lurking just there as well. I'm back here today with Lucas. It's been Hello. a while. Yeah. It's good to be back though. I don't remember the exact date when the car was here actually, but... We came in as well, well, it was a year and a half ago that you did these upgrades. We also put the C63 here, mm. um, but obviously since then it's had a service in the UK, it's had a service in Arizona, and now we need a service here. Yeah, that's really the only car that will have international, an international service history. Well, intercontinental service yeah. history. So <laughs> it's all hooked up because software is a part of this as well, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, campaign yeah, or something. Yeah, there's, uh, they call it like a service measure uh, and it's not like a recall. They just, it's, I think it's even just for the uh, European cars, not even for the US cars. They use the same software in the US. Uh, they just have a different coding because they don't have the uh, particle filter. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and this recall doesn't exist in the, in the US. So if you would have had the car in the US and uh, you know, they couldn't even do, do, do an update because now I have a few customers in the US as well. And, yeah. and I even told them like, you know, before we tune the car, let's get it checked. And they said, there is no, no update available in the US for these cars. It has something to do with some, you know, I don't know, error code, measures, functions. I don't even know because they don't want to say. <laughs> the good thing is it has no effect whatsoever on, on the power of the car. Yeah. So we, we did like back and back uh, testing, you know, having a car which was tuned, yeah. putting it back on stock software, then doing the update and uh, no issues with any like, you know, power loss because sometimes it can be like this, you know. Interesting. Well, I can tell you from my experience, 20,000 miles, 32 and a half thousand kilometers. To date, not a single blip, nothing. Mm. No errors, no software glitches, no funny driving. Knocking on carbon. <laughs> yes, knocking on as much, this is literally carbon, knocking yeah. on as much carbon as we can. Yeah. What's this telling us? That all's good? This is, this is the factory uh, system because, you know, we have also offline systems, but then we couldn't do uh, the update. So I'm, I'm just checking like, you know, for potential error codes. Sometimes we have like, you know, even like information about something. Um, I don't know. It might just tell you some bit of information yeah, yeah, that you yeah. can't see. Yeah. Or even if would, you know, if, if the oil would be too hot, like, you know, stored error, which yeah, is like yeah. in the history that something was not right in, in the past. Well, I think this um, is, I, I was just saying on the video, I think it's quite interesting because like this did a full hard track day at Yas Marina in a very high temperature evening. Mm. Um, it's been driven through the desert. It's, it's not normal European conditions, yeah. we can say. I mean, apart from maybe, you know, uh, southern parts of Europe, like in, in Portimao, or uh, I just came back from, from Estoril testing. Lovely. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you run these cars at 35, 40 degrees temperatures, there might be issues popping up that you don't face over here. Yeah. Because, you know, okay, you, you may have 40 degrees at the Nürburgring, but this will happen. Not maybe often. Often. <laughs> not, not often, no. So, yeah, everything looks good. Perfect. No errors. Stored, everything is green. The only thing is the service measure, which, uh, yeah, the dealer could do, but then the, um, you know, the tuning would be overwritten and the car would need to come back. So, yeah. okay, 
we have a different solution for these uh, customers who have the, uh, the cars uproad. Uh, we can send them a flash cable and they can yep. just reprogram the car themselves. Which is perfect because obviously this had service A initially, that was done in England. Then it had the service B because it has this kind of flip back and forth yeah. schedule when it does these things. So we need to effectively do a service A today. Which uh, is kind of but we, we do actually more than the service A today because the idea is um, to you know have the world's first uh, well, apart from factory test cars, yeah. <laughs> the, the world's fa uh, first uh, GD Black Series uh, to, to, you know, have a, a service done with this high mileage. I don't believe there is, I, I mean, okay, there are customers having like 10, 15,000 kilometers on it, but it's just half of what yeah. you have done. So uh, we would do a normal engine oil change, but also transmission oil change. Yeah. Just to have a look, you know. And I think it's interesting as well, to, isn't it, to look at some of the components. There are a few things that... Yeah, for example, just mentioned like, you know, issues that might pop up if you run the, the car in, in hotter conditions. Uh, there are uh, plastic blower valves from factory. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, they fail, you might risk, uh, uh, like, you know, even the turbo failure on the cars. Yeah, like, we don't you know, want that. <laughs> stupid things like these. And so this, it's always worth checking. The system is just now checking for, for the update. We know already that it exists because you got the letter yep. to bring the car to Literally service. Literally a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking, not really sure how to, how to deal with this, but it's great that you're able to, to yeah. do that as part of this update now. Yeah, it takes like 15 minutes. I'm sure we will, uh, next step will be to, to uh, lift the car up, uh, drain the oil, or the oils actually, Three different type of oils because you have two different oils in the transmission. You know, you have the hydraulic part, you have mm. the differential part. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's in, in one case, but it's yeah. separated. You have the engine oil, um, brake fluid. We need to see if it was changed this year in America already or not. I because, can't remember. I'll check on the. I'll yeah, check on so the so this this that. is what we can check because if not, it would be due uh, this year anyway. So we yep. could do it right away. It's not a big big deal. Um, and obviously, like you know, the general uh, big check of of every part, including brake pads. I was going to say when we pull the wheels off, it will be interesting to see. What yeah, the the, state of players, actually, you know, it's always worth checking on these cars uh, and on, on heavier cars that uh, are very powerful because, um, you know, the, the usage uh, uh, obviously depends. Every customer drives the car in a different way. But what sometimes can happen is that you think the pad is still okay from uh, the upper part, but in the lower part where you can't see or from, from mm -hmm. the inside, the pad could be worn more. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's always worth checking with, uh, you know, having the, the wheels uh, off and, and yeah. Because this is still on its stock pads. They haven't been changed. Original factory. That's crazy, given the fact that you already had so many track days yeah. with, with the car. But yeah. Um, so it's running, it's programming. That's good. We need to have a visual check of the underside. That's, that's, a, yeah. that's the bit. Just, just to see how many bits I've broken. <laughs> you know, these curtains, okay, they just break or bend at some point it's it's not not a big issue uh can be replaced i don't have all the curtains here but you know no. this is some, uh, arguably it's not particularly necessary it's going to happen again anyway um what else oh my question would have been actually how well the normal cup to work on the car which you know because they were not intended to be mounted they, they can be but it's like you know not the factory uh, delivery state so obviously when they're not up to the same temperature you'll never get that ultimate grip mm. but i feel they're actually a little more progressive on normal driving you have mm. more of a sense of when they're going to slip out from mm. whereas mm. the regular cup 2 r's for the car wider fitment different compound it's all good it's all good it's all good and then it goes mm. whereas these it slides a little but this, bit more i think this is the main problem with the mo1 with the softer compound yeah. because we've been testing a lot and i can tell you like in sr when it was hot you couldn't do a quicker lap than uh, 146 something okay. with the MO1s because they started just to give up every lap and we didn't have uh, enough MO2s with us, with the harder compound. Yeah. And now uh, we set like a, so to say, official record lap with our uh, partners in, in Portugal, uh, Stefan, who is the CEO of Till Motorsport. Some people may have seen it that we are now, you know, mm -hmm. on Instagram partnering with, with some stuff. He drove the car 
on MO2s, and it was the 14435, I think. Okay, 144 in a GT Black Series S to real. Yeah. That's fast. That's fast, yeah. There were That's even really race cars. <laughs> there were even race cars like, you know, Aston Martin GT4, McLaren's. They couldn't keep up on slicks. And that's with the full 1,000 horsepower package? No, it's actually the, the same, same you have. Okay, yeah, because horsepower. we downgraded the car. It's, uh, if you have 1,000 horsepower, it's nice to have, but uh, it's you still have much. to brake. You still have to <laughs> brake. I mean, on Norge Life, it's a different story. You could maybe you know, use a, a few ponies more, but um, yeah. It's an interesting one. When you're going for maximum performance, you have to be conscious of traction and braking and everything else, yeah, as you say. Yeah. Because, you know, at some point, uh, I can tell you, like, you know, a funny story, which, which was fun because uh, it had no uh, bad ending to it. But um, when you look at uh, Maro's um, fastest lap, which was, I mean, we know there were faster laps than the laps uh, they have shown or the lap mm -hmm. they have shown, but there were more attempts to do a, a quicker laps. But, you know, bad weather, too hot, too cold, rainy, whatever. Then they focused on the AMG1. So, you know, so it, it was just on pause. Ki kind of. But um, you can see in some sections we are like 10 kilometers quicker than Maro is. I mean, yeah. even me driving the car. Obviously, I'm way slower than Maro. Yeah, Don't yeah. get me wrong, but in some sections where I know how I can push, it's just crazy how faster the car can be if you know you can go this section like that and, and uh, don't risk too much. And what happened actually over um, Schwedenkreuz was that the car started lifting off because Maro cannot go over 300 there with the stock power. Yeah. And, and I just hit like 305. And this yeah. was the point where I can say it's too much because <laughs> you could feel the car really, yeah, you know, yeah. It, That's terrifying. It wouldn't flip. No, no. But uh, I think I mentioned on, on Misha's video, immediately after this picture uh, or the video of yeah. the back accident, you know, at Flugplatz. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you feel you're losing the front and it's lifting. You need to get that front tucked down yeah. again. Yeah. yeah and it was time. not even the, uh, the wing was not, not in the highest setting. It was the mm -hmm. mid setting, the rear wing. Wow. Crazy. Uh, yeah. The car's but, making noises. Yeah, it needs to like it, you know, ignition off, on, coding. <laughs> All of that. Yeah. That cover looks really nice, but it has to come off. It has to come off, yes. <laughs> For now. It's just one screw. I also find it fascinating. There's aero in the engine bay. Like how many cars have aerodynamics inside their engine? I mean, even the normal GTRs, GTS, they already had the channel, yeah. you know, which is like cooling down the turbos a bit and it also has the effect of taking out all the hot air out of the engine bay. It just yeah. goes under the car and it's been sucked out. This looks good because, you know, the car apparently never overheated or something. Yeah. This is, I mean, just normal, better. but there's everything is on maximum, so that's fine. And these are, you know, we fitted the blow-off valve adapters. Yeah. They help a lot, um, but there is like a plastic piston inside. Mm -hmm the actual actuator. And if this fails or starts leaking, could be an issue. But luckily we already had put like at least these uh, blower valves. And, yeah, uh, th yeah this. that protects the OEM part effectively. Yeah, it's because deep. otherwise you have plastic on plastic on this car. Yeah. It's also not uh, well thought out. I don't know why they still did it even on the Black Series. It's different on the E63 because the E63 is running more boost mm -hmm. um, or the GT63. And uh, there you have at least like a metal ring insert on, yep. on the other surface, but yeah. This is all looking as it should. We just should, you know, check them just okay. for safety. All the parts off. Yes, this is the stock part. This is the adapter we have retrofitted. Um, and as you can see, it's a plastic piston. It has a lip here. And um, when it needs to rele release pressure, just opening up and closing again. Somet yeah, yeah. And sometimes it can happen. It just stays open a bit. Yeah. And this is enough to, to, you know, kind of reform the plastic part when it's getting too hot and... Oh, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. under very be high temperatures. Because it's before the intercooler. So we have very high temperatures. Yep. But thankfully, all is as it should be. It's at least this side. We will check the other side, but it looks good, you know. Second part also looks good. Perfect. Exactly as we want it. Yeah, like new. This is how we want the thing to be. I haven't been driving hard enough.
<laughs> no, um, in this case, it's really this, this part helps. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Well, thank you for fitting them. We now have all the wheels off. Yeah, and see that the car <laughs> has collected many stones. They are absolutely yeah, everywhere. Ev everywhere. Here also, like, I don't know. Under trim panels and everything. But it would be even worse if we had cup to ours. So yeah, we've for escaped sure. that. For sure. Let's talk brakes. Brakes. Uh, the discs look like nearly like new. This is uh, one of the three indicators here. I mean, here you can see. Already it's you know showing somewhere, but I'm sure if, if we wait them or you, if you have the special um, system to check it, because you know this is like first visual inspect inspection, but um, there's like an overlay pattern you put on and you can see clearly oh. uh, like you know kind of the percentage of the use. But anyway, the discs, discs are fine. Uh, they are a little bit different than uh, the ones of the GTR. Uh, channels are like on a proper motorsports disc. Okay. So it's, it's a newer generation compared yeah. to, to the normal GTR. Probably painfully expensive when you do need to change. Uh, actually, luckily, they cost the same. So, oh, okay. But, but they, I think now it's 600 euros more per side, so it's like 4,000 euros or 4.1. Used to be 3.5 each. For one? Plus VAT. Times four? Yeah, Times the real ones, yeah, yeah. Okay, we don't need that in a hurry. No. Pads. Pads are looking slightly worn on here, but... Uh, actually, no. The only thing you can see that the outside pad, which is normal, got slightly warmer than the inside pad. But otherwise, it's just like still 80% left or 70, something like that. Which is quite surprising. Those, those don't look anywhere nearly as worn as I thought they would be for the amount of driving the car's had. But it's really, you know, it's all about the cooling. And, and being careful. And also, uh, you know, this being a proper, like, you know, Track car, it's track, for it. track pad compound. Yeah. But I'm also quite conscious of brakes. I don't brake at the last second and I don't do lap after lap after lap after lap. The only thing I, I already saw, but uh, this was clear because it's just a one piston mm -hmm. caliper. Uh, the brakes at the rear, they are like, you know, still okay, but should be replaced during the next uh, few thousand miles. Okay, good so to know. It's like, let's say, 50, 60% is, is gone. Okay. So less than a half now. Interesting. Uh, and also the discs actually, unfortunately they, they have more wear than the front ones. And the issue is um, that in my opinion, it was not the right decision to put this caliper on. So for example, your SLS Black yeah. Series or the other SLS, they have a four piston caliper. Okay. And it uses just more of the uh, disc surface. Yeah. So uh, yes, you have really less wear on, on the whole disc. Okay, interesting. So I will need a set of rear pads before too the, long and then discs will... Yeah, well, you know, the discs will probably, depending on how, how often you drive uh, on, on the track, you know, this is obviously, if you compare it to the front, yeah, you can, see, uh, it's you can see it's more worn, but you know, it's still good because it's just one indicator and, you know, like I say, there's a special system. We don't have it here because, you know, we can also put them uh, off the car um, on the scale and, and, and uh, weight them. And there are also ways to get them redone, refurbished. Yes. Yeah. Once well, at least. Something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, we will check the other side, maybe check the under part of the car and then get the oil service done. Yeah, here it's about the same. It's more worn, but still, still okay. Same with the pads. This is more worn than uh, the other one. Usually, uh, the main issue is that um, actually, uh, interestingly, they only have one sensor on the left. Oh, and the right will go first. Uh, not really, but you know, Pants. it can happen that you have like you know, um, a customer driving with the ESP on on the Nordschleife. And it will just, the, the brake pads will disappear within half a day. Yeah. Because okay. the car is stabilizing with the ESP system yeah. mainly in, in the back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because the brake pad is so small, yeah, the wear is uh, significantly higher. I'm driving but, with ESP on too much, aren't I? I need to turn it off more. <laughs> mm, not really. I mean, if you drive normally, you don't overdo. Yeah, true. 
and uh, overdrive the car uh, uh, over what it can, you know, do um, and it's still stable, it will not be an issue. But, you know, if you're just going too quick and the car needs to stabilize all the time, uh, this is where uh, it comes from. But, yeah, it's still, I mean, yeah, these are more worn than the left side, so we need to decide if we put new ones on or not. Mm -hmm. Here it's the same. Doesn't look bad at all. A little bit more actually worn than the left side, which is strange because typically the left sides are gone earlier. I think so, it's like this little crack here. Is this something to be concerned? Uh, no, it's normal. I mean, sometimes you have even um, manufacturers with aftermarket pads where they have like a, a cut or two cuts. Okay. So it, it just doesn't have this crack, but that's normal. We're now underneath the car where we have all of these curtains, which are kind of well, flexy and doing what they kind yeah. of do, right? Everything looks good. I mean, uh, it's normal that they will be, you know, shaved off a bit, uh, especially when you take the lip out and yeah. go a few laps on notch life, especially in carousel, it's just like, you know, rubbing it off. Yeah. Uh, As we've experienced, but it's, snapping off it's, the it's not, it's not so bad. I mean, you still have a recall. I checked in the system uh, where the, the part needs to be checked and yeah. maybe they even will replace it to a newer generation because they have some sensor issues with this. Okay. You don't have with your car, luckily, but you know, yeah. if it's a new system you will get, why not? Because these are the catches to pull out the front yeah, splitter. Yeah. And from my point of view, it looks like this is the first generation of the splitter. Yeah. And uh, the newer ones, uh, there is something changed, but uh, you know, they had like different things. It was the same with the rear spoiler. The supplier went bankrupt, I think, then they had to go with yeah. another one. That's why you, you know all the, the stories. Beginning. Yeah, I mean, here the custom system, uh, downpipes you, you got, looks good, no cracks whatsoever, no water coming out, so there is no leak. Well, it's everything kind of looks what we good. want, and it's very blue, which always looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even, if it's not its a, even if it's not titanium, but uh, no, everything looks good. Take it to the other left for the oil change. A quick clip while we're here, oil being drained out. The main plug is actually off to the side, just under the front left, which is unusual to see. That's nice and easy, then eight and a half liters of new oil can go in. There is also another little plug there as well where you have the filter, which will of course be replaced using original OEM parts. This is now the last of the transmission fluid. The trays came off, loads of dirt and gravel and stones and all sorts, but pretty much as you expected. Yeah, all is clean, everything is good. Transmission case was uh, dry, no leaks whatsoever. Five liters of used, but still clean oil. Good, I suppose we, we want to check in case there are any issues, but all looks nice and kind of interesting to see some of this as well, the structure going on underneath here. Yeah, this is a subframe. Sometimes uh, when you have noises um, coming from the back, it could be this part. I remember we had that with my SLS once. Yeah. We fixed the back of my SLS. So uh, they get loose here. Yeah. And uh, typically we just give them a little bit more torque than the factory gives them. Yeah, it keeps and it And then on. it's fixed. So we will just wait for this to finish up and then uh, get it refilled. Yep. The next part of the process, it's time to warm up the car. Of course, it's now got the extractors all hooked up, which is kind of fun. Need to get it up to temperature, a little bit of a road test as well. Uh, Running the cold start, obviously now with its new transmission oil, engine oil, filter, host of updates and things that we've looked at final process. That's quite trippy. <laughs> so we're back down. Next up is a bit of a road test, get everything up to temperature. And uh, Lucas is going to take it for a quick run, check that everything feels like it's doing what it should be doing. And then we'll uh, be hopping in to the car for our onward journey from there. All good with the drive? Yep. Test drive completed. You know, we've been checking all the oil levels. After everything was warmed up, uh, this uh, procedure to relearn some sensor values after the software update was done. Yeah, everything is checked. All as it should be. Yeah. Drives well? As before. It's I mean, exactly as before, isn't it? I don't think that 
you are going to feel any difference because you know the oil coming out of the transmission was still like new. But I mean, so, even compared to 20,000 miles ago, right? Or 18,000 miles ago. Yeah, still feels like new. It's still wonderful. Well, thank you very much for all of the work on it. Thanks for your visit. Service your inspected. We've got some pads coming. We've got the piece for the windscreen coming. Yeah, it's ordered, back ordered. The mm. shrouds. And um, yeah, I'm amazed at how well this car holds up, to be honest. Everything is in tip top shape. Awesome. See you just, again. Just needs to clean up when you're back, but <laughs> apart from that. And it actually needs 40 tires as well. Yeah. That's a side topic, but those will be sorted as soon <laughs> as we get home. Thank you very much, Lucas. Good to see Thanks. you. It is time to head on out. It is a big thanks to Lucas and the team here with Opus. In fact, Lucas departing in the Aston Martin Vantage, new Vantage as well, which in some ways shares a few similarities <laughs> to this car. Of course, with some of the Daimler connections and the engine and different things like that. There's more to it than that. That's just a very simple level. But yes, GT Black Series, 20,000 miles on. There are some things it needs, as we've talked about. The thing on the inside of the windscreen, because I've had, well, this is now the third windscreen. I've had four sets of front tires, three sets of rear tires. They're all pretty low now and need changing. We're still on original discs, pads and everything. Obviously, rear pads completely done because of traction and being single pot calipers, basically single piston calipers. But Regardless, it's a beast, it's a monster. I love this car. It's traveled to so many places. It's now got a Nürburgring sticker and all is well with the world. I thought there might be something more to uncover and some leaks and some things like that, but it's also had three services in three different countries, England, USA, and now Germany. It's been to three different continents. It's driven three Formula One tracks so far, more to come and there's a lot more in the pipeline. But as you can possibly tell, it's now started raining. It is a far cry from the sun of when we got here earlier, but that's the Eiffel Mountains for you. That's it for this time though. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support. This car will now be packed up for a very short period, I think, and I'll catch up with you again with plenty more very soon. Cheers.